So let's talk a bit about the shift, because you yeah. mentioned a shift um, in that this is the National Arts Centre. Yeah. And um, I guess at the time that we grew up in, uh, it was the expectation that the National Arts Centre would be supported by the national government to do national things in Canada and undertake this risk. So here you are doing national things as the National Arts Centre, but being supported to do national things by private people. Well, and it, it's look, the National Arts Centre has a number of these kinds of these kinds of uh, uh, these kinds of ambiguities. Uh, ambiguity? You're being diplomatic. Uh, uh, <laughs> the ambiguity here is that the National Arts Centre uh, is uh, is generously funded by the government of Canada. Uh, the government of Canada puts in, you know, roughly thirty-five million dollars out of the seventy to seventy-five million dollars that we have a year. Uh, it's, it's, as I said, generously funded by the government of Canada. But what the government of Canada, what that pays for, is this building and the work we do locally in terms of music and theater, English theater, French theater, dance, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, what it doesn't pay for is a range of national activities. Uh, it's just, you know, the, the history of the place was such that by the time you finish doing all the things here that you have to do and you, 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 you pay the actors and you pay the salaries and you do all the rest of the stuff, th there was no money left for national activities. But I do have to ask the question though, Peter. if before you came and yep. the NEC wasn't doing so well and wasn't doing national activities, why, and again this is the political part of the conversation, why any government of the day when said, you know, we have a national arts center, it's not doing anything national. We have to give them some funds to do that. This did not happen. Instead you went a different route. You said we have to raise this money other ways to do national well, things. Well, we, we did and, uh, you know, they, they, you persuade, you, you, you tend to persuade governments to give you money uh, in, in one of two sets of circumstances. Either because things have gotten so bad that the roof is either literally or again metaphorically falling in, which is the case of the Science and Tech Museum here. So it's so bad that the government of Canada has to come in. Uh, in addition to what it's already doing, because remember, it's already giving you a generous amount, or you have to be successful. Uh, and the other, the, uh, and and my experience is that governments and 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 individuals and businesses, uh, as a general as a general rule, like to invest in success. So uh, as we've become more successful. Uh, we have, we have, we have, we have found that the government of Canada has been very supportive in a number of individual initiatives. For example, on the scenes, they come in each time uh, with one-time money. So you go uh, to Canadian Heritage for a specific for allocation. One-time money for right. a whole bunch of things that we we combine that with money from provinces. We combine that with money from the private sector. We combine it with audience revenues. We, we become very entrepreneurial, and part of that entrepreneurial is, is the government of Canada. And, uh, uh, but, but we just, we found that, uh, that since there was not enough of the base funding left to do national activities of the kind that we thought were important, we had to find another way to finance that, and we have. And we have come up with a very interesting model, uh, a business model, uh, using as I say, money from the foundation, uh, and I'll, I'll give you an example of, of the of the Arctic tour we did, or the the Arctic the northern scene we did two years ago. We used money from each of the territories. Each of them came in as as partners, significant amounts of money. The government of Canada came in with significant amounts of money, one-time money. Uh, a whole bunch of individuals and corporations came in with money. We had box office money. And we did uh, a really quite remarkable northern scene, uh, which uh, <coughs> which you know broke even or made you know made a few dollars, and and we brought every major artist from northern Canada here. We brought the most interesting emerging artists here. 
we brought fashion designers and we brought chefs and, and, and it was an incredible celebration of the North here in the national capital with money that was not, was not part of the, the, the annual your, base. If, to be oversimplify this, I think what you're saying is as artistically entrepreneurial the artistic leadership must be, the other leadership in any arts organization has to be as entrepreneurial in terms of finding revenue streams. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and what, is, what is now interesting is that it ultimately becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy if you're successful. We, we traveled, in, in the month of October, we traveled through the UK with a benefactors group, a group of Canadians who uh, supported the orchestra and who paid uh, not only to be there, but made a, all made a kind of contribution to the tour. The people on the benefactors tour were from British Columbia to Newfoundland and everything in between. Now, you know, 15 years ago, the idea that you would get a group of Canadians from every part of the country following the NEC orchestra in the UK, <coughs> it just, it could never have happened. But now, they've, uh, they've all invested financially, emotionally, in other ways, in different parts of the National Arts Center. Uh, they, they, they have confidence in the organization. They enjoy being part of the creative experience, and there they were cheering us on. But the, and that's, part, that's partly the dividend of you and the staff actually building a national organization over the last Absolutely. 15 years. And the let's, foundation developing the foundation. extraordinary relationships. But let's flip that upside down. Let's say, okay, it's all very well for Peter Herndorf and the NAC to do that. They're a national organization. They have well-connected and political and money friends and whatever. But here I am in Cornerbrook, and I'm starting a a, a theater company or a dance company. And so Mr. Herndor says, you know, multiple revenue streams, you know, from many, they say, but I'm in Cornerbrook. I mean, how do I find, I mean, I have people who will buy tickets and maybe the Cornerbrook City Council will give me a break on my rent. How do, how do the smaller arts managers then find a multiplicity of revenue streams in order to support the art? It, it's not a simple answer, but, but, but I'll give you a clue that, that over the last few months, I've been watching Virginia Thompson, uh, the producer of uh, the Corner Gas movie, as she has been looking for different uh, funding models to finance Canadian feature films. And, uh, and, and, uh, and what Virginia did uh, with the Corner Gas, the movie, uh, was a degree of crowdfunding uh, that was, I think, unprecedented in uh, Canadian feature films. She raised uh, three hundred fifty, four hundred thousand dollars of of that feature film through crowdfunding, which is individuals, fans uh, who contributed uh, to uh, to the cost of that movie, who became who became part of the set, who did all those things. Uh, you know, and not something that a uh, not something that Francis Ford Coppola, uh, in his vintage days, would have done. But uh, but Virginia needed extra funding to uh, to do some of the things she wanted to do, and that is available in Cornerbrook. In Cornerbrook, an imaginative an imaginative uh, arts administrator has a way of attracting people to his cause, in the same way that the Cornerbrook. Baseball league uh, attracts that dry cleaner and uh, and that drugstore and this. They all get involved in that baseball league. In Cornerbrook, they should all get involved in in that theater. It's theirs. They they all have to be proprietary about it. And so, so what I'm talking about is is saying, look, government's very important to us, and they will always be very important. But 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 you also have to get the community whether the community is Cornerbrook or the community is Canada, you have to get the community involved in the same thing. And that means an incredible investment of time and effort in getting them involved in, in community building. And that arts organization is community building writ large. Incredible time and effort in community building. Yep, yep. 